welcome. We're very happy that the Shemit Parach, he is choosing us to stand in front of his children and to reveal the light of truth in his world. Yesterday I gave a class and I explained that really to, to decide to teach and to become a rabbi, for that you need to be one of two things, or the most craziest person I've ever seen in my life, like complete mad person, wrong or evil, like something wrong with him for sure. Oh, an amazing righteous man that I admire, that like, wow, look what he's doing in this world. Because when you put yourself to teach someone else, so you're representing the one that you're teaching. So when you want to represent Hashem, you want to tell everyone who Hashem is and what Hashem wants from them. So how do you know how you can be so sure? What is really your knowledge? Where you got that knowledge from? Did you saw Hashem? You heard Hashem speaks to you from the fire? No, we're not prophets. So, or that you're crazy. <laughs> or that you're crazy. Uh, but like in a good way. <laughs> When we're talking about the will, that the main thing is the will. So there are going to be other people that will come and say, no, how can you say the main thing is the will? The main thing is to learn Torah, it's to learn Halakha, it's to know exactly what you need to do. The will. You're obligated. We're all obligated. We need to learn Torah, we need to keep Torah mitzvot. You want, you don't want, you need to go to shul. Main thing is to keep the wrong mitzvot. How can you say that the main thing is the will? Because it's a guarantee for every person in this world that he will fail while trying to keep the wrong mitzvot. The verse is saying that there is no righteous man on land walking with us in this world that will do only good and will not gonna sin and will not gonna fail. No one, not even one, not even Meshach Tzidkenu, David Amelech, King David, even he was standing in front of Hashem in Barach and said, I sinned, I made something wrong, it's me, I need to be punished, I'm doing tshuva, and he did tshuva. He confessed in front of Hashem, he apologized to Hashem, he did whatever he had to do to fix it in front of Hashem, in front of people. He, it's even written in the books that he made something wrong. So, you've been humiliated for generations that everyone will know. That's the greatness of our nation, of our people, that they admit in their mistakes. Avraham Avinu made mistakes and did tshuva. Yitzhak Avinu made mistakes and did tshuva. Yaakov Avinu made mistakes and did tshuva. They all been punished, they all suffered. They, when they wanted to rest a little bit in peace, to breathe, to relax, Hashem Yitbarach brought more things to wake them up, to understand their mistakes, and the Torah is rebuking them, and the Mishnah and the Gemara is opening, the Midrashim are explaining to us in the depths of their mistakes exactly what was wrong with Yaakov's behavior, and what he was doing, we're not allowed to do like Yaakov, he did something wrong, and on and on. So you see that no one is immune from, from failures. No one is protected. No, me, I'll never going to see. No, you don't have that. So why are we saying that the main thing is the will? Because if for you the main thing is purity, if for you the main thing is learning Torah, in the moment that you will fail, then what are you going to do? You see all of those guys that are failing in a way, and then they lose their mind. He fell once. He failed in a big thing once. And then that's it. 
he's losing his mind. No, but look at me, what I'm going to do now, how can I bring myself again to, to learn, I cannot, and this small tiny failure is interrupting and confusing him and getting into his systems and makes him crazy. And only why? Because he assumed that he's an angel. He thought to himself that he's holding something so amazing in such a high level, that he's so high, that he's in a, in a madriga, that he is now learning Torah and he's spiritual and he learns and he's teaching. Oh wow, he's a Zakar Rabim, he's a Talmid Chacham Atsum, a Gaon, a genius. Great, nice. But what are you going to do when you're going to fail? Like the Gemara is telling us, and Talmid Chacham, the Talmid Chacham can fail, that if you saw him, that he sinned at night, so don't judge him the next day, because for sure he made Shuvah. So even a Talmid Chacham is failing at night. Even a Talmid Chacham can fail. But he knows how to do Shuvah. To do Shuvah, it means to strengthen yourself with the will. What it means to do Shuvah? To give yourself another chance. To say to yourself, okay, Hashem gave you another opportunity. Now you can fix, don't worry. That's the main thing, the will. Because for sure, you're going to fail. You don't want to fail. I know, I also don't want to fail. But I failed today. And I failed yesterday. And I failed in the day before. And I'll tell you a secret, I'm, I'm about to fail tomorrow. It's obvious. I know myself. Like... Those are my patterns. That's where I stuck. That's, that's, that's what goes on with me. Hashem needs to humiliate me. Hashem needs to take me and to show me, to expose me to, to my humility. How to be, how that I'll be humble. Because if I won't be humble, Hashem won't be able to be with me. Because Hashem is only with the humble people. So where you learn your humility from? Tell me. After finishing Masechet Beitza, after finishing Seder Nezikin, Gemara, all of the Farshim, when you finish Masechta and then you make a huge Seuda and you are rich, of course you have money, you make a big feast, people coming, barbecue for 150 people, everyone are coming and you're finishing the Masechta with your deep explanations that you... Now you're going to show your humility? There is no connection between you in that moment to humility. No chance, admit. No connection. When you feel humble, when you don't wake up in the morning, when you can't find your glasses and after half an hour you see that they're on your head, <laughs> that's when you wake up. When you look for your car keys and you're running late and you lose your mind, that's exactly when you are waking up to understand that you are zero and that Hashem is the king, and that He's running the world. And He makes a fun out of it. He makes you laugh in the end to wake up and to see, yes, I'm zero. You have a plan. Yes, I'm going to go early. Today I'm going to prepare myself, mix everything ready, and you think I'm going to make it, I'm going to do it, I have a plan. It's all yes and whatever. And in the end you're running late and you don't find the keys, and you don't find the, the, the whatever you need, and the papers, and my bag, and who took it, and what happened, and, and you lose your mind, and then you're getting nervous, and you start screaming, and you're losing your mind, and then you realize that you're zero, and then in the end Hashem is bringing you, and everything goes smooth. But you lost your mind, and Hashem is using it to show you that your mind needs help. That you're not on top of everything, and that you're not such an angel, and you're not such a genius, and not so successful, just like a regular person that needs help. And then you're humble, and then you're able to talk to Hashem, and to tell Him, please Hashem, help me not to lose my mind, not to be crazy, not to be upset, not to, to get furious, not to forget that you can help me always, that you're with me, that I'll remember you. And He makes us forget. And He makes us fail. There are things that you learned already 50,000 times in your life and you know for sure I'm not supposed to do those things. It's bad for me. It's not good for me. I'm falling after I'm doing it. And you go and you fall again. And in the next day, you wish. In the next hour, you fail again. And in the next hour, you fail again, again and again and again. If it's Lashon Ara, if it's guarding your eyes, if it's not learning Torah, if it's not going to the Mikveh, if it's thinking about nonsense, if it's watching TV, video, videos, YouTube, being stuck on Facebook, if it's doing whatever, filthy things, if it's to I don't know what, 
to ask help from certain people that are disgracing you and hurting you, if it's to go and, and, and make yourself poor in front of your own self, if it's, if it's not to give yourself that strengthening, that chizuk that you need, whatever. Everyone knows their defects, their defaults. Everyone knows exactly where they're failing. And in the next day, like you're new here in town and you're about to check everything and you fail in every failure that you failed yesterday, like the most stupid person you ever met in your life. And how can it be? Because Hashem makes you forget. Because Hashem loves you more than you can understand. Because Hashem wants to give you the key for success and it's humility. That you will be humble. That you will remember Him 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. That you're not going to forget Him. That you're going to remember Him. That you're going to connect yourself to Him every moment. And the one that He loves the most, He rebukes them the most. It means that He's pushing them down to rock bottom to show them you are zero. And not because that He's cruel. It's because that we are so arrogant. We're so full of ourselves and I'm talking about myself. So busy in thinking what are we doing and what are we planning and what are we thinking and what we had in mind and what we should. Who are you? Say please Hashem Ibrach, let me breathe. You don't know who you are. You don't know who He is. You think that you have certain existence. You have certain power. That's the power that He just gave you. He can take it in a moment and it's not a threat. Those are not judgments. It's only to have gratitude. It's only to understand what's going on in this world. There's no traffic. You can see on ways that it's going to take you 40 minutes and in the end in 22 you're going to be there and it can take one hour and a half. And it was written 40 and Hashem Barachi runs the show. Suddenly you're going to have another way, shortcut, suddenly you're going to be stuck an accident, and that's it. And you cannot plan. In the most planned and perfect plan that you had, it's, you can throw it to the garbage. There is no plan. There is only Hashem. So the main thing that we should do is only every moment of our life to reconnect ourselves to Him, to reattach ourselves to Him, to link ourselves to Him. Every moment I want to be with you. I want to think about you. I want to help you. I want you to help me. I want to see what you want from me here in this situation. What do you want from me here? If you think that you know the Shulchan Aruch, if you think that you know what's the Halakha, if you think that you know what's the order of your day in the morning, early, early before dawn, I need to wake up, wash my arm, wash my hands, go to mikveh, say birkot ha-shachar, in a minyan, if you're Ashkenazi, they're going to say, you're going to answer, amen. If not, you're Swadi, you can say, wachot to yourself, you should go, you should do, and then you should learn, and of course, you need to learn, chumash and rashi, parashat shavua, you need to finish the parasha before the end of the week, by the end of the week, and you must learn dafayomi, how you can have a day without gemara, and mishnayot, and mishnayot by heart, for sure. Rav Stern said, you must learn mishnayot in machshava, in your thoughts, also by heart, also mishnayot, to have said with kehati and all of them for shim, and of course you need to have machshava, in machshava, also just your thought, because it's purifying your body, your soul, your mind, you want to be pure, yeah great, out, oh, zor, you must learn zor. How can you finish your day without learning this? Oh, Midrashim, Talmud Yerushalmi, come on. There is no time in the day. You're not able to do that. The one that is doing it, he's not married. And if he's married, so his wife, she's a widow. He doesn't have children. And if he does have children, so his children are orphaned. They don't have a father. So if you want your wife to be a widow and your children to be orphaned, so go plan. Have your schedules and have your plans for the future. But if you want to have a child and you want to be his father, so for that you need to learn how to build puzzles. So it means that you need to sit on the carpet. So you need to take off your shoes. So you need to relax and to be humble and to breathe. And if you want to have peace in your house, you need to have a wife. A wife is not a robot. It's not like those electronic uh, hoovers. Uh, Drones. 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 Drones? Those are the, the things that fly, the drone. No, that's something else. Yeah. The, the vacuum cleaner. She is not a maid. She is not a servant. She is not your slave. She is not a robot that runs after you and clean. That's something else. You want to have also a maid in your house. You can have a maid. 
But if you want to have shalom, if you want to have a wife, so you need to have a relationship with them. Relationship means communication. Communication means time, means conversation, means take her out once in a while, means spend time with her, sitting with her, talking with her, helping her, thinking about her. Let her express her emotions, her thoughts, her heart. No, she will do this, I'm going to do that, and everything will be perfect. That's your plan. But Hashem got a different plan. Hashem wants you to be human. Hashem wants your wife to have a friend. Hashem wants you to talk. Hashem wants you to communicate, to have a relationship. It's not all about what you want to achieve from that wife, because she's not your property. And if you live in those dark days that you think that your wife is your property, so welcome to reality. I'm sorry to disappoint you. It doesn't work like that anymore. And that's why Hashem and Baruch gave women so much power in our days. That women today, they have the ability to express themselves and to talk and to scream and to shout and to rebuke you. And it's good. And it's the best thing ever. Because without her, you would never learn. Never learn. Because without a mirror, you don't know what you have in your teeth. You don't know how you look. You don't you know if you have something in your beard. You know, you know, you don't. Hashem made your eyes like that, that they go in a way that they look outside. So all of your inside, you cannot see. How can you see? Can I see if my teeth are clean? No. Only if I have a good friend, someone that is standing in front of me and going to help me and tell me, hey, listen, you have something in your teeth. Okay, thank you, Achim, really Mamash, really appreciate it. And I'm going to clean myself. And if not, I'm not going to know. And thousands of people are going to laugh at me on Facebook. So you need to have that good friend that will help you. So that's your wife that she will be there for you to help you. And if you're getting so insulted, why are you telling me? Why are you saying it? What do you want from me? You keep on rebuking me. You forget. You're here to learn. You're not here to win. You're not here to, here to enjoy. You're not here to rebuke her and to, to, to shush her. You're here to learn what Hashem wants from you. So if she's coming and fixing you and helping you and guiding you and give you support and advice, it's advice for your life. That you will be decent, that you will be right, that you will be holy, that you will be pure, that you will be nice and kind. With patience, with wisdom. And if you don't want to hear, it means you don't want to learn, it's okay, you're not, not going to know. It's not a problem. You can be ignorant from all of the wisdom that your wife can share with you, and not to know what that she is about to tell you, and okay, so you're going to achieve, hopefully, 50% of your potential. The truth is that you're going to achieve much less because you won't have no blessing. Because lo matza akadosh baruch hu kli machzik bracha ela shalom. Because Hashem itbarach, the creator of the world, couldn't find a better vessel to contain the blessing except of peace. Peace is not a mute button that she's quiet and she's not talking. That's not peace. Peace is a progress, a process that is progressing with conversations. That's how you make peace between states, between communities, between enemies. You go and you sit and you discuss and you talk and you build and you agree and you create a law and understandings and a relationship through communication. And if you're not going to talk, you won't have no, no, no trans, trans, trans parties. No, that's something else. Transparency? Transparency of information? Yes, that thing, that's one, that one. <laughs> and then, and, and trans parties, you won't have them also. <laughs> so you must talk, you understand? That's like, you must dance, so you must talk. In every class that I go, people are laughing from different jokes. I don't know if it means something. So if you want to learn, so you have that opportunity, you can learn. So what does it mean to learn? To listen. Okay, you came to a class, you want to hear, you want to learn something. Okay, so now you're playing with your phone, you're playing with your things, you don't know, you're busy, you've talked with a friend. That's not how you learn. If you want to learn something, so okay, you need to sit and learn. So now she's coming and she's trying to teach you. She's trying to tell you, listen, you are rude, you are lazy, you are selfish. Now, if you don't want to fix it, okay, so say, I don't, I'm, 
I'm not built for a relationship. But what if she's wrong? Sorry. If she's wrong, so. <laughs> Look, I came ready, but I'm not sure that you have the vessels. So I'll be quiet. I'm not going to answer. And if you want to know, so ask it again. Okay. No, I'm saying, what if she's wrong? Like, how, how, like okay. you, can you say that she's so, the mirror? What, what if I'll you need to be in her mirror? Okay, so I'll tell you. I'll ask you something. If, if, if Hashem... You know what? I'll make it easy for you. Is your wife in women's section now? I'm the watch. So, you understand that Hashem Bar sent you to heal this class and not her? She's doing something else now. But you need to heal that. Hashem sent you. That's your supervision on you. No, I understand. I'm just saying with the right person, she could be a good mirror. But with the wrong person, she, she could also... Sometimes it's hard for us to accept our mirror. That's what I think. No, I understand. It's good like, that we understand. We have to know... You know like, I, I accept like uh, things people that tell me you did this, you know, you know and stuff like that. But, but there's a situation where... You know, the other side is wrong, you know, and you're like... Uh, so, uh, from, let's say that maybe you're right. I, I, I won't argue with you, but from my life experience, what that I understand, what that I saw, is that every person needs to take 100% responsibility on everything that happens to him in life with no connection to what that his friend is doing. Let's say that now I'm driving and there is another crazy driver that is crossing lanes and he's acting very, very wild on the road. I won't drive in my own lane in the allowed speed because I was here first. I'm going to watch over myself and because I care about my life, I'm going to drive slower and I might even stop until this crazy person will go. So, I, when I want to succeed in my life, I will not going to see what he's doing, what she's doing, I'm going to try, just I'm going to try to think what I can do to make my life better. So, let's say that the person, he's got a wife that she's, let's say, violating Shabbat, she doesn't want to, to listen at all, she's arguing, she's a nervous person, she's screaming, she's cursing, she, she couldn't care less about, I don't know what, she's upset all day long, she don't care about your hobbies, about your will, that you're tired, that you're working, she's just screaming at you. Okay, if I would be you, what that I would do is to try to see why she's suffering so much. And how can I help her to be a better person? Not to teach her, just to provide her the things that required for her to build herself and to grow and to be a better person. I will judge her favorably and I will try to understand why she's suffering so much from such tiny things instead of telling her, listen, but those are tiny things. What's going on with you? And I'm not going to do that ever. Even once in my life, I'm not going to do that. So you cannot say like uh, the thing, the Wim Sholbach. So the Wim Sholbach, it's an amazing verse. All the verses are amazing, just they are working only if you put them in the right place. Let's say you bought an amazing food processor in the United States, and it's amazing. It's new, it's expensive, it's perfect. You can make amazing things from it, and now you're going to go with it, you make aliyah, you're going to put it, the plug in the, in the wall, and, that, and, the, and that's it, and it's done, it's all burnt. Why? Because in Israel you have 220 volt, and here you have only 110. You're going to put it in Israel, it's dead, finished. You can throw it in the garbage, no guarantee. Why? Because you used it in the wrong place. The verses are exactly the same. It's written that... Hashem Barach said to Chavai Menu that her punishment will be Vehu Im Sholbach. But when Hu Im Sholbach, when he will have control on you, the power to lead you, to influence on you, 
when he will be who that he is, only when he will fix himself and going to be a man, so then he will have the ability to lead his wife to good places. But if he is not a man, if he is not holy, if he is not holding in a place of purity and his mind is aimed to the purpose, so then his lusts and his desires will control him and he will lose his control and his wife will tell him exactly what to do and then it's a problem. So that verse is good when the man, like that it's written, Ishak Shirao Saritzon Baala, a kosher woman, she will keep the will of her husband, she will follow her husband. But Ishak Shira, who is Ishak Shira? Ishak Shira, a kosher woman, a pure woman, a happy woman, must be a woman that she will be married to a person that will be also kosher. So he needs also to be pure. Now, he can complain on her why she is not behaving as an Eshe Talmid Chacham, a wife of, of, of a scholar of a Talmid Chacham, but she's not married to one, so what do you want from her? Like, he's going to hate her on, not, on, on drinking um, chalav, chal, milk that is not Chalav Israel. Why he will be upset? Because Rav Moshe Feinstein said that a person that learns Torah it's better for him to drink Chalav Israel. So he wants his wife and his children to drink only Chalav Israel, but he forgets the fact that he is not the Talmid Chacham that Rav Moshe Feinstein was talking about. So, not to drink Chalav Israel in the US, it's okay for everyone, but if you're a Talmid Chacham, so it's better to drink Chalav Israel. Now he wants her to drink Chalav Israel, but he forgets to be a Talmid Chacham. So, it's kind of a That's problem. That's why he's an can go. If so, you be good, she's gonna be as a If you be bad, to be good, she's gonna it be means, To be good, it means that Hashem Itbarach will say on you that you're good. Not that you will feel no, good. The, the person can come with can bags of shopping to the house and to tell his wife, look, I brought you this and that, and she's gonna take his head off. And he, like, why? What's happened? I just, I did the best. I was working all day long, and after it I made shoppings, and only to make your life easy. But that's what you say. You say, I did it all, that your life will be easy, I try to help you. But the real truth, and Hashem, Hashem, He knows the thoughts of the person. He knows exactly what, re what it really you were planning. You were not really thinking about how to make her life easy. Just you had it enough with her screaming and rebuking you and insulting you. And you don't have the power to suffer from her anymore. So you said, it's better for me to suffer a little bit more in the grocery store and to make shoppings and to bring them to the house. But actually you were talking for an hour, Lashon around her, you hated her, and you didn't have the power to think about her and to feel her and to care about her. And you just wanted her to be quiet already and stop screaming all day long. So you made shoppings and you came, and now you want her also to believe that you did it for her. But she looks at you... And she feels that you're phony, that you're a liar. She smells, she realizes. Why? Because Hashem gives her B'nai Terah, an extra oh, yeah. wisdom. And that's your problem. My problem. That Hashem is Barach. He loves us too much. And He is helping us through our wives to wake up. And then He opens our eyes and lets us think that we know something. And actually, we don't, we don't even deal with reality. You so can try... The B'nai Terah and then on the other side you say that the uh, Da'atakala. It's like so some, it's two different things. Like I told you, there are things that Da'atakala, but it doesn't mean something bad. If Da'atakala, if she can be easier and, 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 and to take things in an easier way, it's one thing. It's also good for, for, for a holy person that his wife, she's following him without investigating and thinking and arguing on everything and pretending also to be, she's innocent, she's that Akala, she said, she counts on you, you're her husband, you tell her, hey, I think we need to move to that community, I think we need to do this, to do that, she's okay, you know what, I'm going with you, she's, she's easy, she doesn't argue, so they got that nature, women. But it doesn't say something bad about them. But still, again, when the Baal himself, the husband himself, is also Datokala, when his mind is also light, and he also doesn't think, so someone needs to think in the house, so she's taking the, the wheel, and she starts to drive the car, and she starts to drive the life and, and, and lead, uh, because she sees that her husband doesn't have responsibility, he doesn't think, he doesn't remember, he doesn't calculate his moves, his lack of responsibility, 
So she, someone needs to protect the children. Someone needs to think about the future. So she's losing her she's mind. She's a fail safe. She is amazing. <laughs> she's amazing. The problem is that we cannot see the beauty because we're so busy with our lusts, with our desires, with our needs, with our selfish needs. We're so disgusting that it's horrible. Really, we're so selfish that it's, it's, it's so humiliating how lousy we are, how disgusting we are. It's so humiliating. Women are not as sick as us, not at all. Women are healthy in their minds. Women are so pure and so good and so amazing. And they love their husbands. And men are not in that place at all. Men, they also love their husbands. They love themselves. And they also always want to pleasure themselves. And that a man will reach that level that he really cares about his wife, that's a huge level. And it's very humbling when a person tries to work on himself and to be holy and to be righteous and he realizes how deep he is stuck in his lusts and his desires and how far he is from purity. It's so embarrassing. A person that really will do tshuva, I'm going to try to understand who is he, who am I, where am I holding with my tavot, with my lusts, with my desires, except of going and crying for hours to Hashem in Barach and tell Hashem in Barach, please save me for myself, please destroy my, my Yetzer Ara, please help me, save me so disgust for myself, except of that, doing tshuva, there is nothing else that a person can do. Women, it's written, that your desire will be to your husband, and then that's the other part of the verse that you said, and then he will have control over you, he will lead you. When he will lead his wife, when you, the wife, the woman, gonna desire your husband. So in the opposite situation, when she's disgusted from her husband, when she doesn't want to be with her husband, when she cannot stand her husband, so he will not gonna control her. When she will disgust from her husband, when she will not gonna want to be with her husband, when when his desire is for her. When he is a righteous man, that he just loves Hashem and he wants to do Hashem's will, so she will run after him, she loves him, she admires her husband. She's got an angel, she's married with a holy man. But when her husband is not holding in that place, and he is wrapped after lust and desires, confusions and, 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 and filth, so his wife, she won't be able to stand him. She cannot smell his breath. She cannot look at his face. She doesn't enjoy his company. He does not make her laugh. Like everything is, is like, why, why, why did I get married with him? And it's only because that he is selfish and he's stuck in himself. A lot, a lot, a lot to do tshuva on. Thank you for waking us all up this evening. And there is no way out. There is no other way except of the tshuva. He does the right thing. Right. So the only thing that we can do is to learn and to accept the rebuke and to listen to the message and to what the Tashem Barach is telling us through our wives and through every part of the creation that the world is talking to us in the secret of stones that are speaking from the walls and palm trees that are speaking and tables that are talking and the, the, the pillars of the bed that will testify on the person well, how he was sleeping and what he was doing and the Gemara is even saying that the person's soul will testify on him in judgment day. Like, everything is talking. All of the creation is is, is, is praising Hashem in Barach and helps Hashem in Barach to bring us all to the purpose of our being. I wanted to tell you a story tonight, an amazing story about a righteous man. That righteous man, his name was Jonathan Ben Uziel. Jonathan Ben Uziel, it's a known thing that Every person that wants to get married, 
is going to the grave of Yonatan ben Uziel in Amuka, in the north of the Holy Land. And over there, many people see salvations, saw amazing salvations by going to that righteous man and praying over there, crying and asking for salvation. And Yonatan ben Uziel himself, he was not married. He never got married. So you're going to ask, how can it be that a person that never got married, he today got the power to influence such blessings on other people to get married? The answer is that that righteous man was able to sacrifice himself for the rest of, of, of the people, for the rest of the world. Because that he was so busy in bringing down bounty and shefa to the world to make other people happy and always thinking and taking care of other people, because of that, people today, even more than 2,000 years after that he passed away, people are still enjoying the fruits of his effort, of his actions. That righteous man, Yonatan ben Uziel, was such a humble person that when he would come to learn Torah, so the Midrash Echalot, one of the Midrashim is saying that when he would come to Beit HaMikdash to learn Torah, to hear Torah from Rabban Gamliel, that he was the prince of that generation, immediately he would sit on the floor. Ever, the students would sit on pillows and stuff like that and would be comfortable to and he was coming and crashing to the floor and just desiring to hear and, and, and to learn Torah and in one of the times, in one of the lectures that Rabban Gamliel gave so I'm sorry, in one of the times in a lecture of Rabbi Nechunia ben Hakana, Rabbi Nechunia ben Hakana, that's the Tana that established for us the prayer Ana Bechoach. Ana Bechoach, Gidulat Yeminecha, Tatir Tzura, that amazing prayer, calling Hashem in His holy name. So, when he gave a speech, so Yonatan ben Uziel came and just sat on the floor to listen to the words of Torah from the mouth of Nechunia ben Hakana. And something happened over there, and the Chachamim, the righteous people, they realized, they thought, maybe Hashem is upset. Why Hashem is upset? That we let a holy man like Yonatan ben Uziel to sit on the floor, to sit on the ground. Rabban Gamliel came to Rabbi Ishmael and told him that maybe Hashem in Barach is upset because of the lack of respect that we had for Yonatan ben Uziel person that is running all of his life to save souls of other people and he's ready to sacrifice himself for the public, for everyone else, everyone needs to respect him. Everyone needs to understand what he's doing for us. And that's a very, very important lesson for all of us to know. That when you see a person that his heart is dedicated for Hashem, that from day, day early in, in every day till the end of the night, his thoughts are only on how to do things for Hashem, how to help his children. We are all obligated to respect that person and to give him support and love. And by doing that, we will be answered. Because his purpose is also to bring down bounty, to bring down success for every individual. And if not, because of those righteous people that were praying for us, we would never wake up to do tshuva at all. We wouldn't open, Hashem wouldn't open our eyes without the prayers of those righteous people that are working day and night to protect us, to think about us, to heal us, to pray for us, to open for us the gates of tshuva. There is a story on one child that was not respecting his parents and his mother took him to the Baba Sali, Akadosh. And the Baba Sali, when he looked at him, he told him, you know, do you want to hear a story? So that kid said, yes, of course, 14 years old, something like that. And the Baba Sali told him a story that once, when they were children, so his father, the Baba Sali's father, wasn't feeling so well. And Baba Sali's younger brother, came to him, to his father, 
and asked him, Father, how can it be that you're sick? And in that question that that child asked his father was something disrespectful. There was some kind of lack of honor to ask your father, how can it be that you're sick? Probably you cannot question about your father, whatever, something like the father answered his child once I had a very shining, illuminating menorah. Like, how do you say menorah? Like, like, lamp. No, not a lamp. Like, a, like, a, like a Hanukkah, Hanukkiah, like a chandelier or something like that. Menorah. Menorah. Oh. Once they asked a Talmud, a Bachur Yeshiva from New York, they asked him if he knows how you say Torah in Hebrew. In the Shana Kodesh, so he said, No, I don't have a clue. Like a Talmud Chacham, and he didn't know how you say Torah in Hebrew in the Shana Kodesh. So, Menorah. So, the father of the Baba Sali said to his child, Once I had a shining lamp, Menorah, and now it's not <coughs> shining as it used to before. So the kid immediately realized that he made a mistake, that that menorah was referring to him, that when his father said that he had something that was shining, it was him, and now he's not shining anymore. So he went to his room, the younger brother of the Baba Sali, and locked himself in his room for nine months. He refused to go out from his room for nine months. He was nine years old, that kid. After nine months, he went out from his room. After doing tshuva for nine months, and sent the person that was working for them in the house, the helper of the Baba Sali, to ask his father if that lamp is shining again. After nine months of tshuva. And when he came to his to the father of the Baba Sali, he told him, yes, the menorah is shining again. So the Baba Sali told that story to that 14 years old kid and told him that was the way that we were respecting our parents over there in Morocco 30, 40, 50 years ago. So to understand the greatness of the righteous people that are really opening ways for us, how pure they are, how holy they are, how responsible they are for us, how much they're sacrificing, just that we will be able to learn a little bit and to pray a little bit and to think a little bit about Hashem, how much they're sacrificing, how much they're giving for us to have the ability just to do the daily things that we're obligated to do. So for that, we need to have that gratitude and huge appreciation to all the righteous people. And I suggest for every one of us to put our minds a little bit on that and to see how we can give back to the ones that we're receiving so much from. Thank you very much. Mesh and Bach bless you all and will help us all, will answer all of our prayers and requests that we're all going to believe in ourselves, going to find the real purpose of our life, going to become one with Hashem, one with our nation, one with the Torah Dusha. Ishet Re'er Yazor, that everyone will help his friends, Ve'lachiv Yom Al-Chazak, and going to strengthen our own siblings. And may we all be happy, healthy, and wealthy. Amen. Amen. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.